So let's talk about neuromyelitis optica, or NMO. This was formerly called de Vick's disease, and that name you might still hear intermittently, so it's important to note that it is the same thing. Neuromyelitis optica is a condition that often, most typically, affects the optic nerves and the spinal cord. So you might see optic neuritis and transverse myelitis as common relapses. However, it can also affect the brainstem and cause a variety of different symptoms because of that. And sometimes it could even cause additional types of relapses as well. Neuromyelitis optica typically is quiet between relapses. So in MS, we talk about inflammation, degeneration, and how that changes over time, can sort of always have disease activity present or disease progression present. Most commonly in neuromyelitis optica, it's either you're in a relapse or you're not, but the relapses are typically severe, disabling, and have limited amounts of recovery. So it's extremely important to prevent those relapses from occurring. We talked about how NMO typically has slightly different relapse types or severities than multiple sclerosis. It also has different findings in the spinal fluid and different findings on the MRI most commonly. There's lots of ways that we might be tipped off. There's a different process than multiple sclerosis going on and that NMO might be that process. Fortunately, we now also have a very reliable blood test and it can also be checked for in the spinal fluid as well. This can help to meet the diagnostic criteria for NMO. And of course, if the antibody test for this is positive, it's highly suggested that somebody has neuromyelitis optica rather than multiple sclerosis. It's also important to note that NMO has very different treatments than multiple sclerosis. It's critical to treat relapses very aggressively to try to stave off disability that might otherwise occur. We can use steroids, we can use plasmapheresis, and sometimes other means of different chemotherapies to try to tamp down the immune system and get control once again. Some of the approved medications for NMO, which are new over the past few years, include Solaris or Eculizumab, Uplinza or Inebolizumab, and Enspring or Satirizumab. Sometimes we use older immune suppressing agents such as Rituximab, Imuran, which is a pill, Celsept, which is a pill, steroids, or plasmapheresis. Occasionally, rituximab is used off-label for the treatment of multiple sclerosis as it is not FDA approved for that indication. Sometimes we refer to NMO as a cousin of multiple sclerosis and sometimes we also refer to MOG as a cousin of multiple sclerosis. MOG or myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein antibody disease, which is a mouthful, hence we call it MOG, is a disease that's being more studied currently because the clinical test for it, or lab, has only been available since approximately 2017. This is a lab test that can confirm a patient has antibodies to MOG. At low levels, sometimes that might indicate a false positive, so it's very important to be cautious when making this diagnosis as it has a different clinical pattern, most commonly, and also different treatments than multiple sclerosis. MOG antibody disease classically causes optic neuritis, transverse myelitis, but can also lead to different or less typical symptoms such as encephalopathy, where somebody might behave differently, strangely, or confused, seizures, and sometimes even attack the nerve roots, which would be very different than the other diseases that we've discussed. Once again, MOG antibody disease typically has different spinal fluid or CSF findings in multiple sclerosis, Oftentimes the MRIs are different, sometimes they're quite different than what would be expected or typical of multiple sclerosis. And it's important to note that again, that test for this is relatively new. So sometimes patients who have been living with MS and diagnosed as such for years, have this test now available, test positive, when we realize this has actually been MOG all along. That's not an extremely common occurrence, but it can happen. And we're learning all the different ways that MOG can behave and act now that we have a test to firmly make this diagnosis. Treatments for MOG antibody disease include steroids, IVIG, Celsept, Imuran, and occasionally Rituxan, although this is typically not quite as effective. This is another disease that we are unfortunately unable to cure, but commonly are able to manage quite well and ensure that people maintain a good quality of life.